I'm uh, I'm Cole Salish, so I, uh, I welcome you to our territory. I welcome me to my territory. Um, w two. I want to tell you about W two very briefly. W two belongs to me. I owe no more. Because what people don't realize about the Woodward's building was that the initial occupation of the Woodward's building was actually organized out of my office with 20 different people. Most of them were indigenous people. And they came to me when I was the president of the United Nations and they said, stop, we want to organize around an occupation. We want to make a statement on behalf of vulnerable populations in the downtown <coughs> East Side. And I said, you know what, this is a brilliant idea, we'll work with you. And we organized the initial squad. And we had a set of demands around Indigenous peoples, particularly in the downtown east side, because that's what we call ground zero for colonialism. And we see all the negatives that are down there. So we made those demands, we organized around that occupation. And what came out of that occupation for us after 10 years now, 10 years, was the legacy, and it was W2. W2 is what is trending for urban indigenous peoples. It's trending with the arts world, it's trending with the, actually the business world and, and the broader community. And that's about taking our place as indigenous peoples in the broader community. It's not enough to segregate us and isolate us and put us over in a little corner where they perpetuate this. It's really about building inclusive, engaging, vibrant, uh, empowering communities. And that's what W2 was doing. It was doing that. It had Aboriginal people on their board of directors. They had Aboriginal staff. They had Aboriginal programming. It was one of the most inclusive, non-Aboriginal agencies in the city of Vancouver. And one of the messages we've been sharing with the city and the broader community is that this is where Aboriginal people want to be. They want to be engaged with the broader community. They want to learn. They want to share. And they want to uh, build community together. So when the city turned around and unilaterally shut W2 down, our organization and many other Aboriginal organizations that use W2 were shut out, and to this day we're still shut out. But instead of dwelling on, on, on how the city is dealing with us, we said to W2 that we're going to continue to work with you, we're going to continue to advocate for that public space, because that public space was fought for initially by Indigenous peoples. And there's many indigenous people that have been kicked out of that place uh, as a result of that. And many of us, many of our organizations and other organizations are uh, working with, as Erwin said, on a campaign. We hope that uh, we can build bridges with what's happening here at the Waldorf and, and the other arts community organizations to make a stand against vision and say, vision, you need to work with us to build inclusive communities. You can't put a dollar figure on that. You can't keep creating committees about saying you want to build inclusive communities and spend all this money over here on dialogues and at the same time shut down a space that was actually doing what you purport you want to do. So that's where we're at. That's what we're doing. We are launching a campaign with W2 around building uh, bridges and getting more support from the broader community to say, let's stand up. Because if we can't stand up collectively for W2 in the downtown east side, then who can we stand up for? And so I'm asking all of you to get involved, that's the video just cut off, get engaged and support W2 and let's build a network amongst all the arts organizations supporting building vibrant, inclusive communities, particularly for the low income, the immigrant and the indigenous populations who want to take their place. So I thank you for uh, uh, allowing me to share my words and um, I look forward to your ongoing engagement.